I can't go into my first erotic experience. I can't expand on that. I mean, I remember it as being a very tender, wonderful moment. I, I just wished at the time, I remember thinking clearly, I wish I had some company. <laughs> I'd walk a million miles for time. one of your smiles. One of my <laughs> Mammy. Oh, I've been doing this for so long, I can't tell you. A lady from Wollongong rang earlier tonight asking if that was a mock crow call I made. I don't remember. I mean, you'd know if it was a real one. Yeah. <laughs> you'd go off air immediately. Come and turn the lights out while you're doing that. Oh, goodness. <laughs> mm. And listen to this. Yes. Why do they say in the beginning of the show, coast to coast, when there is only one continuous coast around Australia? What an F word. <laughs> the um, coast to coast. <coughs> coast to coast means Sydney on this coast, on the on the east, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And uh, all the way to Perth, <clears throat> on the west coast. That's coast to coast. Fool. <laughs> Thank God tennis is finished, and Graham and Ken are back. At last, Channel Nine, who have been deceiving us. <laughs> with recorded sport and all kinds of rubbish and lying to us. Thank God I put that bit in. <laughs> he's a giant. I mean, I, he is... He's one off. He did things that I, I think that even now you hear... You, you, the irreverence that you see here sometimes maybe on radio and on an occasional television special with our young comedians. He was doing that and more 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Uh, so how far ahead of his time was he? He knew how to take the boundaries of good and bad taste right to the very, very edge. Many Australians are inclined to use the foreshore late at night at Kirribilli for a progress of a different nature. And there I am with the binoculars. And I think, really, I mean, it's so inconsiderate. My binoculars are too heavy to hold in one hand. <laughs> An Adelaide woman says, <clears throat> the money spent on Graham would be better spent elsewhere. Oh, where? That's debatable. I don't think you watch our credits. If you watched our credits, you'd see this come up from time to time. Much of the money I receive for doing this goes to the Life Education Program to help young Australians lead a better and longer drug-free life. Would you like to see Australian youths live a miserable short life in the gutter? with syringes, you slack-assed Adelaide Tart. <laughs> uh, oh, th is that a late item? Has this been checked? Yep. How many sources? One! Name it. Kumquat! Kumquat. That's what you say... Oh. <laughs> when you want a quat to come to you. <laughs> The direction for asking a, a quat <laughs> to, to approach you. And what else would you say? Come quat, you say. And a little quat comes up. The tears would come down, which is a family trait, by the way. When we have a belly laugh, the old tears tend to come down. And Graham, in the first few weeks, even in rehearsals, noticed this and, and he used us as a hook. And he used it right throughout that year, but there was a genuine—it was a genuine belly laugh—and it was just more out of, "Wow, you can't say that. You're—you've got to be joking." And the tears would flow, bring out the tissues, and Graham had this wonderful way of stretching it and stretching it and stretching it and milking the moment for everything it was worth. <laughs> I love it when he cries. <laughs> 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 well, when uh, Graham steps onto any television station, he automatically assumes that, not assumes, I'm the star. So they shared the dressing room and uh, Ray would have you know, all his personal photographs of people that he interviewed over the years up on the wall. But when Graham came in at uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, they came down and Graham's went up. And this went on for about 12 months. And it was quite hilarious. It was a, it was a bit of an arm wrestle in many ways. But it was just Graham being a very naughty boy. Not a naughty boy, but just saying that maybe we all shouldn't all take ourselves too seriously. Uh, but, you know, there's only room for one king on this particular network, and I just happened to be it. Graham eventually uh, got his own dressing room, which was 
down the other end of the hallway and he made sure when he got this new dressing room that when he left the station he didn't have to go by front reception, walk through a studio, walk past anybody. So what he did, he had a door installed in this particular, uh, where we are now actually, where we are now, and he'd just step up from where we are now, after he'd had a nice red, walk straight over to this door, car and a driver waiting for him, and he didn't have to say goodbye to anybody. He loved that. <laughs> Come on down, Sam Sutcliffe! Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. Oh, what a good boy. Sam, Sam. And there were things that were accidents, like the day my dog came to the studio, he invited my dog onto the set. Sam, the Labrador. Very well endowed Labrador, I might know, male Sam. And he jumped up on the table on our uh, desk, and Sam, and Sam unfortunately pointed his backside to the camera, and the director at that particular point in time pushed the button, and all you got was Sam's backside, tail up in the air, and everything else was exposed. What a nice picture, three dogs. <laughs> It's a three-dog night. <laughs> he loves that tennis ball, doesn't he? He does. He's quite frantic about them, actually. Quite stupid, actually, when oh, it comes to tennis balls. He's but he's beautiful. Yeah, he's all right. He's he good, really is. He's a good mate. He's a good mate. So that's that's Sam Sutton. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted you to meet him. It's just a thrill. Yes, <coughs> that is a nicely framed picture. <laughs> Spot, Spot Graham Kennedy. <laughs> and that was just an ad-lib moment, but he had a he had a great way of making everything look pretty natural. Yes, uh, delicious Campbell's tomato soup with just a hint of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> that looks, oh, that looks disgraceful. This is not all that new. I think I've seen this. <laughs> this is a, uh, a Breville uh, something, a massager which is not all that new, but I just wanted to play with one, and uh, I think it's terrific. Just think, for the first time, Ken, yes. uh, a, a portable massage parlour, and when you're finished, you don't have to pay the $100 for one with a lot. You simply <laughs> do that. I think it's fantastic. Well, not as cheap oh. as... Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, it's fallen into my lap. Oh, good night. On a current affair... Ken was staying with me in the United States at the time that he got the call. He was covering a big sports story in America. And he got this call saying, Graham Kennedy's going to start a late night news program and he needs a straight man and he's picked you for the job. And Ken, of course, having grown up in Sydney, wasn't really aware as I was of the Graham Kennedy history. And I said, Ken, you've got to go for this because this guy is huge and for him to come out of retirement to do a late night news program is going to rock the socks off everybody. And I caution, Ken, the only thing you have to watch out for, mate, is make sure you don't end up his punching bag. <laughs> Guess who ended up his punching bag? I think you just got out of California at the right time. You know, there were a few tremors while I was there, and you kind of, you know, it just doesn't bother you after a while. Well, that's good. It's one thing you don't have to worry about here, Zon. Initiated into coast to coast until <laughs> until you've sung the chum song. A one, a two, a three, a four, a five. Been the chum, she's beautiful. That was a big one. Always happy, always happy, happy here, happy there, everywhere. So he's got to get it wrong. Right. Right. That's wonderful. That's just one. That's just And then everybody then be knowing that you did chum, chum, chum. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> The Easter egg routine, Graham has, uh, has very kindly called one of his greatest moments in comedy, and I feel very flattered about that. At Greek Easter, I gave Graham some of my mother's <laughs> Greek shortbreads, which is something that you do. Mm. I've never tasted anything like it. I'm glad you like them. I don't like it, I just have never tasted it. <laughs> it's 
with the shortbreads come the, the hard-boiled red eggs. And Graham asked, what do you do with these red eggs? And I explained that families during the Greek Easter feast sit around a table and smash the eggs. And at the end of all the smashing, one egg remains unscathed. And according to the tradition, that brings that person good luck for a year. One, two, three. I, I don't think mine. <laughs> look, it's. Oh, there's, it's everywhere. Oh, look, there's a bit of this. Oh, there's a nasty bit. Of... <laughs> Most of those magical moments that you saw at the set were not only carefully constructed but, but very well rehearsed in Graham's dressing room every night before we went on stage. Oh, it's, it's, it's like when we're home, isn't it? <laughs> have, now, you, have you just have tuned, you tuned in, in, folks? <laughs> this is a news program. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> the most beautiful part about working with him was that you could hear the tag to the same gag ten times in rehearsal in his dressing room, get out into the studio in front of an audience, and it would come out just that little bit different. And uh, a lot of the times those tears of laughter from me were very, very real because I knew what was coming, and yet he'd still deliver it in a way that made it sound like you were hearing it for the first time. Noah went to the top of the mountain and said in a loud voice, Lord! <laughs> Lord? <laughs> Lord! <laughs> Noah went to... No, not him. <laughs> Noah went to the top of the mountain. Noah from the... Biblical Noah from the Old Testament went to the top of the mountain, and he said in a loud voice, <laughs> Lord, there's a flood coming. Should I build an ark? <laughs> and do you know what? Noah didn't do live television for a long time. Say you've had a few drinks, and you just you've got it all, you know, and you're going like that, and you go like this. There you go. <laughs> My God, these are something you slip on, and they wouldn't recycle them because, uh, well, you wouldn't. I think you're meant to take them, don't you? I've got another one. Look, I'll show you. <laughs> You really like Truly, don't you like <laughs> Well, I'm not crazy about it, but I think you might have shoved one of them down the front of your jogs. <laughs> oh, no, I tell you, that's, that's snow. <laughs> it's more of that. The Greek word for an envelope is fakilo. And such is Graham's comedic mind, rather than do the obvious gag and ask me one night over the desk, John, what's the, what's the Greek word for envelope? He, was, he started working on a routine, and the routine was in an office. And what if I need to borrow a pencil, which became his famous molivi, and he'd hold it up. And what's, what's the Greek word for paper, hardi? And then the tag would be, well, what if I want an envelope? Molivi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure my Libby's not dirty for some No, it's not. <laughs> I've picked up, if you've just tuned in, look at my Malibi. <laughs> huh? I think it's dirty. It's not, it's, not, it's not dirty. Why do they look? Because, right, I have picked up my Malibi. <laughs> so I've written with the Malibi on the hat tea. Now pass me an envelope. Fuck you, Lord.
All right, I'll get it myself. <laughs>